Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. All right, let's get this show started. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Deja vu. Greetings. It's deja vu when I'm running up these racks. I'm like the terminated screen. I'll be back. It's deja vu. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. It's like every week I got to take out the trash. I'm on top of my game, head of the class. You can tell that I made it. Look at my grass. Cars in the garage with tanks full of gas. I play the game so raw, I won't finish last. Sitting in my living room, screaming how we made it. This is how it's supposed to happen when you get your famous. The algorithm turned to a maniac. I guess we go and follow because I'm 40 yet. Good morning. Welcome to the show, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry. Sometimes things do get busy uh, right over here in the kingdom. So let's get straight into it. We don't have much time. Um, for those of you who do not know who I am, I go by the name Zeus, or as some like to say, uh, Triple H. And, and why do they call me Triple H, ladies and gentlemen? Well, you know why. The first H is because I'm honest, right? The most honest person on social media. The second H, ladies and gentlemen, is because I'm humble. There's nobody... More humble than me, all right? I promise you that. And then the last and the final H, ladies and gentlemen, is because you guessed it. I am and will always remain the most handsome. <laughs> Many of you are familiar with what we do over here on this side of town, on this side of TikTok. What we do is very special. We tell the truth, ladies and gentlemen, uh, and that involves us holding our friends on the right, especially their cult leader, Donald J. Trump, Accountable for their dirty, disgusting, filthy deeds, as well as their crimes, all right? And believe you me, uh, isn't it safe to say that when it comes to our friends on the right, they've hit the jackpot or something? I mean, these folks, ladies and gentlemen, they, they love criminality. They love crime. They love being vassals of transgression for Donald Trump. These folks have no morals at all, all right? And so because they don't have any morals, we have to do our Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. We have to do our part as fellow Americans that we hold them accountable. All right, and so listen up. If you are one of those folks that likes Donald Trump, you know, you feel like you're going to vote for him. Maybe you even feel a little shaky right now. I can't vote for Joe Biden, right? Uh, you might want to leave this live and go on about your, your miserable morning, all right? Because like I said, it's going to be very, very uncomfortable in here, all right? Because uh, we're going to tell the truth uh, whether you like it or not, all right? And listen, uh, like I said, uh, just because it hurts your feelings, it does not mean I owe you an apology, all right? So, I've given you a, head, a heads up, 
But you don't got to take my word for it. Listen to your leader. If you're not happy here, then you can leave. As far as I'm concerned, if you hate our country, if you're not happy here, you can leave. Right. If you're not happy in the U.S., if you're complaining all the time, very simply, you can leave. You can leave right now. Come back if you want. Don't come back. It's okay, too. But if you're not happy, you can leave. You have lied before. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh, I didn't even get into my bag just yet, but I see someone already out there starting up. You have lied before, and you will lie again. Uh, Chris, Chris, come on in the box real quick, champ. It's Monday morning. Uh, I had my coffee, but a lot of folks haven't had their coffee. They come to this show, Chris, because they want me to tell the truth about what's really going on out here, Chris. And I haven't even started the show yet. Hey, you're going to start off saying Zeus has lied? Sir, if that's what you want to go by, you are the one lying. You are the one who literally worships the devil. You are possessed with the MAGA demon, Chris. So no, you can't come into my platform and tell me I'm lying. Your life is an entire lie, Chris. We ought to check Chris's hard drive, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, I didn't want to do it already, but I'm going to. Because Chris just got me activated this bright and early on a Monday morning because he's already coming in here with that MAGA demon. Ladies and gentlemen, join me in giving Chris our first honorable round of booze and shame. Come on, Chris. Oh, Chris, I'm going to be honest, Chris, I'm a dangerous person on this app. I get a lot of Trump supporters just like you, and you know what I make them do? <laughs> I make them tap out. You know how many Trump supporters have tried to befriend Zeus? Zeus, I'm going to be your friend. I can handle you. After about a week of dealing with Zeus and realizing there's nothing they can say to change my mind, they go into these other lives and then they start crying about Zeus. <laughs> oh, Zeus. Oh, Zeus and his friends, his minions. They call them minions, right? You know, tank, Tiny Tank Top, Tim Tom, whatever he wants to call them. Zeus and his minions. Oh, they made me feel so terrible. You're darn right. This past weekend, ladies and gentlemen, how many of you know who Retribution is? How many of you know who Retribution is? Uh, put, put a one in the chat if you know who Retribution is, all right? I mean, this guy comes into my live fully indoctrinated with MAGA. I got some terrible news, ladies and gentlemen. It's with the heavy heart. All right, I'm so sorry to do this. Retribution is probably going to hate me, but I'm going to say it anyway. Uh, he came to me and he said, Zeus, I can't take it anymore. And, and not those exact words, but you get what he said. And he said, Zeus, I can't take it anymore. I'm done with TikTok. And then he deleted the app and all of a sudden he's no longer on TikTok. I said, ooh. See, that's what I keep trying to tell you, folks. A dangerous man. Retribution has deleted TikTok, ladies and gentlemen. And he will no longer be a threat out here because, yes, he understands what the MAGA reward is. So for Retribution, since he wanted to be a confederate in Donald Trump's, uh, in Donald Trump's confederate army and he's lost and he's down and out, let's give Retribution what he deserves. Let's send him off the old-fashioned way. Goodbye, Retribution. <laughs> I usually save that for the end of the show. <laughs> but you know what? We got to take care of business. I don't care if you Trump supporters unfollow Zeus. I really don't. Look at all the harm you've caused this country. Look at all the damage you've done. As far as I'm concerned, you can only come into my live, sit your special behinds down, and listen to the special broadcast. I don't want to hear from you. I do not want a MAGA thought circulating around up here because i've debunked all your conspiracies i've debunked all your lies and it is now time to get down to business all right speaking of getting down to business ladies and gentlemen let's get this show started all right uh jesus christ tiktok is acting up but you get what i'm doing right before i got on live the reason i was a little bit late is because uh president biden uh he issued a letter today uh to the congressional Democrats, and as many of us have been keeping up with what's been happening in the media, uh, there is some infighting between regular Democrats and so-called Democrats, right? And, and I get it. I totally think it's fine. I honestly do. 
Uh, I also, I honestly think it's fine when there's healthy disagreements going on because that's how life works, ladies and gentlemen. Not everyone can just walk around here and say yes. The Democrat Party, there is no, we're not in a cult like MAGA, all right? But, uh, you know, I think the grievances have been expressed. And I think uh, I've heard enough on all sides to, to come to the conclusion that uh, we're a little, like four months right before the election. It makes absolutely no sense to try to swap Biden now, bring up, re, uh, try to try to fundraise and get all the money that you, Biden already has. Try to get all the whoever it is on the ballot in every state. I just think it's going to take way too much time to do. Plus, if I'm correct, I hear the Republicans will be going as far as to try to sue whoever the person that they're trying to replace on the ballot for saying, you know, hey, you just can't switch the candidate midway through. They're going to try to file a lawsuit and may basically force us to stay with President Biden. So as far as I'm concerned, we are we're going to be riding with Biden here on out. Anything else is pretty much uh, a, a distraction. And so President Biden today, this morning, he released a letter. I'm not going to read it all, but I want to just make sure you all go look it up yourself. He says, "Fellow, de my fellow Democrats, now that you have returned from the 4th of July recess, I want you to know that despite all of the speculation in the press and elsewhere, I am firmly committed to staying in the race, to running the race to the end, and beating Donald J. Trump. Thank you, President Biden. I have an extensive I have had extensive conversations with leadership of the party, elected officials, rank and file members, and most importantly, the Democratic voters over the past 10 days. I have heard the concerns that people have, their good faith fears, and worry about what is at stake this election. <clears throat> I am not blind to them. Believe me, I know better than anyone the responsibility and the burden the nominee of our party carries. I carried it in 2020 when the fate of our nation was at stake. I know these concerns come from a place of real respect for my lifetime of public service and my record as president. I have been moved by the expressions of affection from me, from so many who have known me well and supported me over the course of my public life. <coughs> I have been grateful for the rock solid, steadfast support of so many elected Democrats in Congress. Thank you for the subscription. All right. And all across the country and take great strength from the resolve and determination I've seen from so many voters and grassroots supporters in the hardest of weeks. I can respond to all by saying clearly and unequivocally. Let's get this out there. I wouldn't be running again if I did not absolutely believe I was the best person to beat Donald Trump in 2024. That's a powerful statement right there, Mr. President. And I agree. There's nobody else that could beat Donald Trump, ladies and gentlemen. There's no one that has a record of beating Donald Trump. Has anyone ever found any? Has any does anyone know of anyone on the Democrat side that has a record of beating Donald Trump? Please put a chat, put a one in the chat if you know someone that has beat Donald Trump. All right. Yeah, let that sink in for a quick second. President Biden has stood up to world leaders, world leaders like Vladimir Putin, President Xi, Kim Jong Un, and he's also had to deal with this little mustache man wannabe who lives here in the United States of America that has ever since he's been out of the office been pretty much running a shadow campaign here in the United States, him and his so-called Confederate soldiers. If that doesn't impress you about President Biden, I don't know what else will. How on earth could one man in his administration stand up to so many threats, foreign and domestic, and still get this country back on track after a terrible job Donald J. Trump did. Ladies and gentlemen, please go read President Biden's letter to the Democrats. Understand, this is a historical letter. This falls right in line with letters our founding fathers all the way up to, I, I'm going to say Barack Obama. I'm not going to include Donald Trump because Donald Trump is a traitor. Um, but this is this is a great example of what being a president is. It shows how to be presidential. Donald Trump could never write such an articulate letter 
Donald Trump can't even think beyond what, how many characters do you get on Truth Social? 144 characters? Donald Trump couldn't formulate uh, a two-page letter to, to, to members of Congress like this. Joe Biden can. And this is a good example of what I mean, ladies and gentlemen. Get behind Joe Biden and understand uh, we really got a country. We, we really got a country to save, all right? And there's no time to play games. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, you know what we got to do. Join me in giving Donald Trump and the MAGA folks who continue to try to tear this country apart by by spreading misinformation and disinformation. We're going to give them a round of booze and shame. And anyone that's still on the fence about whether or not they support President Biden, this one's for you too. Let's go! Yeah, I told you, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this was going to be a very, very uncomfortable show. And like I said, uh, maybe you didn't hear me at the top of the show, but, you know... Uh, if you're not happy here, then you can leave. As far as I'm concerned, if you hate our country, if you're not happy here, you can leave. If you're not happy in the U.S., Good morning, if you're everyone. complaining all the time, very simply, you can leave. You can leave right now. Come back if you want. Don't come back. It's okay, too. But if you're not happy, you can leave. All right. Again, uh, any Trump supporters out there that are crying about eggs, gas, bread, do me a favor. Go on the Internet. All right. And then I'm going to open up the box. Find me the country that you believe has the ideal inflation rate, right? Find me that country, all right? And then I want to know what country that is, all right? Could you do that for me, MAGA? Because there's something I want you to do when you find me the answer to that question. Fine. To the Trump supporters, find me the country that has the borders you want and the inflation rate you want, all right? All right. I'm looking forward to that, all right? Now, let's listen to what Morning Joe says. He blasts the media lead for pressuring President Biden to drop out. <laughs> Uh, just 10 days out. All right. And this is after he called for change himself. Morning Joe host Joe Scar Scarborough hit out at media elites for pressuring Joe Biden to jump out of the presidential uh, presidential race just 10 days after he himself called for Democrats to consider stepping down. As Biden supporters have rallied behind president in this week since his pivotal CNN debate. The MSNBC host knocked the call from elite class of Democratic individuals demanding that the president drop out. So in other words, like again, again, ladies and gentlemen, there's really nothing wrong with expressing your feelings. Right. I think that that's what shows we're uh, we're America. We can get the feelings out there and we can talk about them. But there is a point where it gets to be. Uh, I would argue toxic. It, it, it's starting to become counterproductive. We get it. We get it. He didn't have a good debate. We we get that. But how long is too long before you let it go? And I'm like I said, I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed. You all know that. But what it's starting to look like to Zeus, and I'm going to say this because I got to keep bringing it up. What it's starting to look like to me, you know. It's starting to look like people just wanted an opportunity to get rid of President Biden and put someone else on the ticket. Right. But there had never really been a good opportunity. But that debate, it opened the door in their minds. Right. For their opportunity to try to put someone else on the ticket. It has really nothing to do with the debate, because if you ask these people, well, who lied the most during the debate? If they're honest, they're going to say Donald Trump. OK, so why are we not bashing Donald Trump then? You're going to bash President Biden for 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 how long? It doesn't make any sense. It's starting to come across to me like you just wanted someone else on the ticket and this was your opportunity to try it. That's what it's looking like. All right. But Morning Joe, he's had his come to Jesus moment. Listen up. After Joe Biden's debate, um, I said he needed to consider getting out, but I said also for a guy who's been in politics for 50 years, uh, who's been in public service for over 50 years, we need to give him time. We need to give him some time. Uh, oh, there it is. For a man who's given more than 50 years of his life to public service, it is more than fair to take a breath and see what happens over the next few days. Well, those few days have turned into about a week, uh, week and a half. And here we are 
And I find it absolutely fascinating. We're going to get to the Bloomberg polls that came out this past weekend. And I've already talked about the Siena poll that shows Donald Trump losing <laughs> independence. I mean, after Joe Biden's debate performance. But Joe Biden now has what I would dream of having if I were running for president of the United States in his position. I've got Washington insiders against me. Well, let's put it the way it is. Joe Biden now can say he's having to fight media elites, New York Times editorial page, billionaire donors. They've been on the phone for a week and a half. Uh, Washington politicians, even though Mark Warner has now canceled his meeting. Uh, and the Congressional Black Caucus, by the way, not really happy with all of these people trying to substitute their elitist viewpoints for that of millions of Democratic primary voters. Hollywood moguls, uh, hey there, Ari, uh, and uh, Ms. Disney, and of course, MAGA extremists. So, so Biden allies now, this is what they're going to say. Oh, wait a second. So you're telling me that media elites and billionaire donors and Washington politicians and Washington moguls, they all think that they can substitute their judgment for the judgment of millions of Democratic primary voters? John Holland, it may happen. Wow, wow, wow. Here's a warning sign for you out there. Hold on, let me get it. Hold on. Here it goes. To the folks out there, Democrats, that are asking President Biden to step aside. Do you understand right now you're on the same side as MAGA? How did that happen? Huh? Whoo! I tell you, I don't know. But you need to knock it off and get back in the game. Get your heads back in the game. Ladies and gentlemen, this is serious stuff. And I'm not going to shy away from having these conversations, all right? Because you know what I do. I told you the first H stands for honest. And it's time to have honest conversations. Unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, some of us have found ourselves aligned with MAGA in the strangest of ways, all right? And you need to get back on track. Ladies and gentlemen, join me in giving Donald Trump and his supporters and anybody else that somehow ended up on the same side as MAGA what they deserve. A round of booze and shame. <laughs> Now listen, ladies and gentlemen, many of you know how these spirits work. The MAGA demon doesn't respect boundaries. It doesn't, it doesn't go, oh, are you an independent or not? Okay, I'll leave you alone. The MAGA demon goes wherever you open the door and leave the opportunity, all right? So I want to encourage folks out here to understand that you got to stick to being honest. Stay to the truth, all right? And ask yourself, who actually did the best during the debate? Go wherever you do your research at. Close the door. Don't let none of your family or friends or turn your device off and just look at it and say, now, who really performed the best? And at the end of the day, if you value integrity, which I believe every leader should value, especially the president of the United States, you're going to have to walk away and go, well, whether his voice was strong or not, President Biden told the truth more than Donald Trump. All right. And if you can come to that conclusion on your own, then you know you got to knock it off. We're going to keep the door to the floor over here, ladies and gentlemen. I, I promise you that. Let's move on to our next topic. I know I got off to a slow start, but we'll try to cover as many of these topics as I can before I open up the boxes and hear from those of you who are brave, <clears throat> who are brave enough uh, to get in the, in the box and tell the truth. So why are they hiding him? Morning Joe points out bad news for Donald Trump. After sharing clip <clears throat> of an invigorated President Joe Biden hitting the campaign trail over the weekend, Morning Joe host Joe Scarborough kicked off today's show by pouncing on the fact that embattled president that the embattled president isn't uh, isn't afraid to get out in front of crowds while Donald Trump has been nowhere to be seen. So yes, we've been seeing Joe Biden get out here, go to these churches, talk to crowds, but for some strange reason, it's like Donald Trump has disappeared. What's going on, Us on this morning? Morning Joe starts right now. You know, I've been doing this a long time. And I honest to God, I'm never more optimistic about America's future if we stick together. So I really mean it. 
Thank you, President Biden. Here's what else I've learned. What else has you learned? Many of you have learned. What is that? You walk your faith as well. Wow. We're all imperfect beings. Right. We don't know where or what faith will deliver us to or when. Tell them, President Biden. What we do know is that we can seek a life of light, hope, love, and truth no matter what. We can seek that life. Take all of our experiences and give everything we have Amen. to work together. Amen. Because when we do, you can't stop us. I, really, I mean this sincerely. Tell them. President Biden speaking at a church in Philadelphia over the weekend. Has, Has he... anyone seen Donald Trump ever go to a church, open up a Bible, and, and, and read from it? Has anyone ever seen that? Because for some strange reason, President Biden can. Or is Donald Trump just out there selling the Bibles, not even knowing what's in it? He puts the Constitution in there, by the way. Y'all see the picture, right? It's crystal clear. Whether you're a religious person or not, President Biden is showing you who he is and what he's capable of doing, all right? You don't got to like it, but you see it. This is a critical week for the future of his campaign. Calls for him to bow out of the race continue from some Democratic members of Congress, as well as members of the donor class. This comes as the president is set to lead the NATO summit this week in Washington. And Donald Trump is lying low for Where the is most he? part. Where he's is disappeared. He? With the where, where is he? Well, he's just, he's where is Trump? Why, why, why are they hiding him? Are they afraid that he may go out and talk about World War II coming or just, Barack Obama being president? Will he go, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, why are they afraid? Like, why are they afraid to let him talk? Here they're, they're going, all their eyes going, oh, Joe Biden. What are they hiding? What are they? What are they scared of having it? And oh. Donald Trump. He's burrowed down in Mar-a-Lago. They won't let him out. He's a prisoner in a gilded cage. Where is he Because they're at? afraid he may actually open his mouth. And Bingo. Of course, the chances, irony. The chances of lying are high. Well, um, you know what they found was? What's that? As badly as Joe Biden did. We've all said he did horrifically. Uh, you thing. look at the polls. Uh oh. And even the New York Times Siena poll, which is always, has Look at always the been polls. against Biden, shows the polls. that even with that terrible performance, he picked up independent voters against Donald Trump. Woo! Even with Joe Biden's, quote, terrible performance, Joe Biden picked up independent voters. Let that sink in, MAGA. <laughs> Donald Trump is done. He's cooked. Ladies and gentlemen, you know what we got to do, all right? Join me in giving Donald Trump and his supporters who keep getting cooked, whether they're on TikTok <laughs> or whether we get them out here in the real streets. These folks don't got nothing to bring to the table other than tears because they're a bunch of losers. Join me in giving them another round of booze and shame. By the way, by the way, by the way, hold on. I thought I had I thought I had that emote says cooked. All right. I put an emote in there for all of you subscribers out there. Please use that whenever we start cooking these MAGA demons. All right. Let's move it along, ladies and gentlemen. I gotta open up the boxes real soon. All right. Uh, what do I want to talk about next? There it is, right there. Yes, thank you, Daisy. Thank you so so much. All right, let's talk about this, ladies and gentlemen. The call was recorded. New Marjorie Taylor Greene Trump claim leads to a to brutal fact checking. All right. You saw her posted on X, ladies and gentlemen. This is what Marjorie Trader Greene went on to say. Greetings, Joy. Nice to see you. Um, Georgia Republican Marjorie Taylor Greene, an ally of Donald Trump, was brutally fact checked on Sunday after she claimed she knows that the former president won the Georgia election in 2020, which he lost to current President Joe Biden. See how the lies get started? Green was advertising a recent pro-Trump voting event in her home state when she made the comment, quote, yesterday's enthusiasm for President Trump on Lake Alatuna was unmatched, she said. I know he won Georgia in 2020, and after yesterday, I know he's going to win Georgia again in 2024. Ladies and gentlemen, 
for the record, all right, Donald Trump did not win Georgia, all right? But for some strange reason, and we'll get into it later, uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene, who I call Trader Green or Lieutenant Marge, she loves to lie. She loves to spread this lie. All right, but viewer or, or people responded to her, and this is what some of them says. Unmatched? He lost in 2020. <laughs> that was a good one. Someone else wrote, you have nowhere near the support you did four years ago. Not even close. And you're bragging about 30 boats when you used to have hundreds? Again, all these flex photos are just showing us in real time how little there are left in your MAGA world, the user added. <laughs> and by the way, you could go confirm this as well on TikTok. Do me a favor. If you think MAGA is growing Go to a MAGA live on TikTok, ladies and gentlemen, and tell me what the poll numbers look like in comparison to Democrat lives. I'm serious. This is very serious. All right. Hands down, whether you're here in the United States or you're in the UK or in France, people are done. We're done with this right, this alt right stuff. Right. We're done with it. It's now the minority. And when I'm done with it, it'll be in the toilet. Ladies and gentlemen, join me in giving Marjorie Trader Green, as well as all the other Trump supporters, MAGA, whatever they want to call themselves, what they deserve. Another round of booze and shame because they keep inflating their numbers when we all can see they're going down. Let's give them booze and shame. <laughs> All right, so let's talk real quickly, uh, and then I got to go to January 6th. I got off to a slow start. I got to try to get out of here on time today, ladies and gentlemen. We'll go We'll go uh, to Project 2025, 20, uh, all right? I was in those meetings. Trump official spills about Project 25's overreach on women. Donald Trump is not to be believed when he says... No he knows nothing about Project 2025. Does anyone out there, let me ask this question because I've seen this stuff. Does anyone believe Donald Trump doesn't know a thing about Project 2025? Does anyone believe that? I'm just curious. Does anyone believe that Donald Trump doesn't know anything about Project 2025? I don't, all right? I mean, I'm not even, I'm not even MAGA and I know about it. So how could I know about it? And then he's MAGA and he doesn't. <laughs> Smells like another lie if you ask me, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Former Mike Pence Homeland Security staffer Olivia Troy, a child of Mexican immigrant, immigrant mother who recently took to social media to call out her former boss for demeaning her own background, appeared on CNN yesterday to discuss the controversial Project 2025. Trump has recently tried to distance himself from the 900-page plan to reshape the federal government, but it's run by his own former White House officials, which is the problem. Listen up, ladies and gentlemen. Is that in once during a second Trump term, such as expanding presidential powers and cracking down on abortion rights. Joining us now is former advisor to Vice President Mike Pence, Olivia Troy. Hi, Olivia. So what do you think about Trump distancing himself from Project 2025, given the fact that former officials that were in his you know, administration are part of this. Do you believe him? <laughs> Hi, Pam. Well, well, no. I mean, look, this is preposterous. Uh, if you look at the collaborators and the authors of this plan, a lot of these people came from directly uh, people that served in Trump's cabinet during his administration. There are people that I worked with, I sat in policy meetings with. They were, a lot of these people were senior administration officials. Um, whether it be Johnny McEntee was in charge of staffing for presidential personnel, or whether it be Stephen Miller, who's behind the scenes Tell pulling the strings on this as well. But you've got Ben Carson listed in here. You have the former deputy secretary of DHS, the acting secretary, Ken Cuccinelli in here writing about immigration in DHS. I mean, so, and then, then Ben Carson, come on, he's been out there on the campaign trail with the president. So I think this is just ludicrous. But I think what this is telling us is that Donald Trump knows that what is written in this plan is so extreme that it is damaging to his possibility of getting elected. Oh. And that's what he's concerned about. Oh. So Project 2025, for those who don't know, is over 900 pages long. Uh -huh. But it does give very specific instructions on how to replace federal jobs with political appointees, oh. um, <clears throat> dismantle the Department of Education and oh. other federal agencies, <clears throat> expand executive power and ban the abortion pill mythopristone nationwide is this 
you know, a winning strategy for conservatives. No, I, I don't think so. I mean, look, I, I am a conservative leaning individual. I, I'm a lifelong Republican. Uh, but when I think of uh, the traditional tenets of the GOP, I think of fiscal conservatism. I think of individual liberties. And quite honestly, if you go through and really read through this plan, uh, this is complete overreach by the federal government on our individual liberties. And I just want to be clear to women and men who support women and our individual right to health care. Uh, I know that we all have differing views on it. I certainly lean conservative on it. But there's language in here that says, you know, liberal states have become sanctuaries for abortion tourism. That is how this document is written. And so when you think about policy meetings in the Trump administration, should that happen again? Should he come back to office? I want people to view the type of language that's going to be said in these meetings because to me, tourism doesn't enter my mind when I think about women who are having trouble having be giving childbirth, who are actually leaving states right now to be able to access health care. I don't think about that as tourism. Mm. And this is the type of rhetoric that is in this document, but I think people need to be paying attention because they're not messing around when it comes to this. And we should believe them. And so, you know, to that, to that president of the Heritage Foundation, which, by the way, is a think tank that I used to go to, especially as a college student and in my summer internships and as someone who worked at the RNC, oh, yeah. I used to go there and take some of their courses and attend some of their summits. When he says that it's, you know, if the left stays silent, it's not just the left that has a problem with this Pamela. It's people, moderate conservatives like myself, who take a look at some of the extreme language in here. When it either uh, healthcare again, or whether it comes to immigration, whether they talking about law enforcement and how they're going to use federal law enforcement in local states and local cities and states with no oversight because there's limited oversight when they use when they do that. They've learned all the lessons during the first Trump term. And that is what is frightening here. And so I think we need to be paying attention to this and no amount of distancing by Donald Trump should be believed because the authors and the collaborators are all part of this operation that's been behind him from even the first terms of this administration. So how, how can they deny that? I sat in these policy making meetings with these people. I know what they're people. We value. That is why we value your, your insights. So ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. <clears throat> Donald Trump knows all about Project 2025, all right? Olivia Troy has just confirmed she was in the meetings with those same knuckleheads who are behind it. These same knuckleheads are a part of his current administration that he's trying to put in place, all right? And these, this same administration is hell-bent on taking away the rights of women and people of color, are, as, are, as well as uh, going after... Uh, immigrants, right? This is a sick plan. This is a sick playbook. Donald Trump knows it. That's why he's trying to distance himself from it. And that's a lie. Ladies and gentlemen, you know what we got to do? Join me in giving Donald Trump and his supporters once again another round of, you guessed it, booze and shame. You know what Project 2025 is. It is what it is, right, ladies and gentlemen? All right, now let's move it on to the final part of the, the morning show before I open up the boxes and then we get up out of here, all right? Uh, many of you know exactly what this is about. This is about January 6th, all right? And you know what I like to do before we start talking that J6 stuff? Uh, I like to check the temperature of everyone to see where we're at. Is there anyone out there uh, that believes Donald Trump's claims about January 6th in particular? Is there anyone out there that still believes the election was rigged? It's a rigged election. It's the only way we're going to lose. I don't think you do. I don't think you do. I've covered this quite a bit. I've covered it quite a bit, but you know what? I don't mind. Uh, I don't mind giving people uh, an opportunity. Oh, oh, someone wrote it wasn't secure. Oh, oh, okay. Black sheep. Come on up here, black sheep. What does that mean? Uh, does anyone greeting CC? Uh, uh, Black Sheep, come on up here. Does anyone believe Donald Trump's claims that the 2020 election was rigged? All right. Um, and, and, and but I, what I mean is, is there anyone that still doubts the results of the election? Uh, if so, uh, please. OK, Cassandra, you do. All right, Cassandra, come on up here, Cassandra. I'm curious about why you still. Oh, Pat, Patriot Rick. 
Can can one of you brave souls come up here and quickly explain to me and everyone else here why you still believe that it was rigged? Uh, Patriot, uh, well, you know, these folks, they, Cassandra, I invited you up here. Where are you at, Cassandra? Where are you at? J6ers are telling names of meetings from our car. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Come on down. Exactly. Does anyone out there believe Donald Trump's claims that the, the, the 2020 election was rigged? Does anyone out there still doubt the results of the election? Yes. Black Sheep isn't available to join. Interesting, Black Sheep. I saw you out here. Why are you not available all of a sudden? It's okay. It is okay to come up here and exp explain to me why you believe the claim. All right, I would love to hear it. Who who do we have next? Of course not. They won't. All right, we'll give them a little bit a uh, little bit more time. Seriously, MAGA, come on up here. Is there any Trump supporter out there? Today is what is today? Uh, July eighth, Monday. Is there any Trump supporter out there that really believes Donald Trump's claims that the 2020 election was rigged? Please let me know, all right? We're really trying to get through this, all right? Because what I don't like to do uh, is bore people with the details, all right? But if we got to, we got to. I saw some yeses, but I think they're they're too afraid to get in the box uh, and, and really explain why they believe what they believe. So let's see what we got. <clears throat> How about his latest no connection to 2025? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We just talked about that. All right. I'm asking one more time. It's a rigged election. It's the only way we're going to lose. Yeah, I guess MAGA is hiding with Donald Trump. Like I said today, ladies and gentlemen, I already got people deleting their accounts, refusing to come to my show now. I mean, these are people who actually believed that Donald Trump was telling the truth. I guess they are starting to understand and see that they, that Donald Trump isn't telling the truth, all right? Well, Cassandra, I'll, I'll use you, Cassandra, since it's sad, ladies and gentlemen. Cassandra is the only Trump supporter brave enough to actually say she still believes that it was rigged. All right, Cassandra, I'm going to tell this story. I'm going to help you understand that it wasn't rigged, and hopefully, hopefully by the time we're all done with this, uh, you will no longer believe that. All right, Cassandra. So let's get, let's get into January 6th. All right. Yeah. All right, Cassandra. Uh, so let's get into this, ladies and gentlemen. All right. January 6th, ladies and gentlemen, will go down in American history as a domestic terrorist attack. All right. And, and, and rightfully so. Donald Trump knew that he was going to lose the election because of things that were going on in this country. Take a look at that graph right there. Look at all the unemployment. The unemployment was shooting through the roof, right? This is what was going on. So Donald Trump decided to devise a plan, or as I like to call it, a scheme. Can you say scheme, MAGA? All right. He had a scheme in which he decided to employ, to deploy that he was going to use to try to remain in power. And it wasn't illegal. It was illegal. All right. So what happened? Well, the night the election results came out, Donald Trump, uh, he did not concede to Joe Biden. You know what he did instead, ladies and gentlemen? Does anybody know what he did instead of conceding to President Biden? Let me help you understand. Uh, instead of conceding to President Biden, he did this. It's such a big night. You just take a look at all of these states that we've won tonight. And then you take a look at the kind of margins that we've won them by. Right. And, and all of a sudden, it's not like we're up 12 votes and we have 60% left. We won states and all of a sudden, I said, what happened to the election? It's off. Right. So he's casting doubt in the mind of his, of his voters, right? He's not saying, President Biden, congratulations, you ran a great campaign. He's casting doubt in their minds about the results of the election. Then he goes one step further, and he decides to trick them into believing that it was stolen. And he says he does it with this. Listen to what he does. 76,000 votes with almost nothing left. And all of a sudden, everything just stopped. I'm not talking about Hillary. This is a fraud on the American public. This is an embarrassment to our country. We were getting ready to win this election. Frankly, we did win this election. All right. So you see what he did? We were getting ready to win. Frankly, we did win. Uh, that's a little Houdini magic trick, ladies and gentlemen, that Donald Trump used 
to convince his supporters that he really won the election. But it was a lie. So what happened next, ladies and gentlemen? Well, you guessed it. He decided to engage in another scheme. How many of you are familiar with this so-called perfect phone call? Do you remember this perfect phone call? I just want to find uh, 11,780 votes, which is one more than we have. So that was the so-called perfect phone call, ladies and gentlemen. All right? All right. And that's what he's begging for votes out there in the, in the wonderful state of Georgia, all right? All of this is criminal, all right? And so now that he has these schemes in motion and several others, what does Donald Trump decide to do next, ladies and gentlemen? You guessed it. Check it out. He does this. He does this. <laughs> Attention, all oh, Trump supporters, Cassandra, are you out there? All right, listen up. He he invited his supporters, a.k.a. soldiers, all right? I call them the modern Confederate soldiers. He invited them to go meet him in Washington, D.C. He said, be in Washington, D.C., all right, at an event that I am hosting called Stop the Steal. It's going to be a big protest. Be there will be wild. This is what he told his soldiers, right? And what did his supporters do? They go, huh, an opportunity to be wet and wild with dad? How could I pass up on that, right? This really happened. So one by one, they all figured out how to make their way to Washington, D.C. Does anyone know how they all started to get to Washington, D.C.? Let me explain to you how they all decided to take that trek to Washington, D.C. They decided, you know what? Why don't we rent some U-Hauls, ladies and gentlemen? Yep, there you go, your majesty. Let's rent some U-Hauls and, and let's head to the United States Capitol, all right? And this is what they did. You know who this was? This is the Patriot Front, by the way. This weekend, uh, the Patriot Front were quite active. Did you all see them this weekend in Nashville? You saw the U-Haul? Let me see if I got some of those photos. You, I thought, I thought, listen, ladies and gentlemen, I thought the U-Haul on January 6th, I thought that was a one-off thing, right? I did. But this weekend, they were marching in Nashville, and we got photos of them, all right? Look at what they were doing in, in Nashville, ladies and gentlemen. Look at this. The, these folks were in Nashville with the U-Hauls once again. Same group, white supremacists. You know who these folks are, Oath Keepers, all right? Boogaloo Boys, Proud Boys. This group, they love to travel in U-Hauls, and they were heading to Washington, D.C. on January 6th to be with their commander-in-chief. I kid you not. And look at this, ladies and gentlemen. You can go check this out. This is their little recruitment handbook. I said, this is some sick stuff MAGA has gotten themselves into. They can't afford a bus, heaven. They really can't. All right? So, yeah, yeah, they were in Nashville, all right? So, now that they... Uh, they get to Washington, D.C. Some of these folks didn't make it, but some did. They get to Washington, D.C., and guess what they get, ladies and gentlemen? They get an update from one of their uh, lieutenants, who I call uh, Marjorie Trader Green. All right, she gives them an update, and this is what she says. This is what she says to the Trump supporters. Everything. If we flood the Capitol building, flood all the government buildings, go inside. These are public buildings. We own them. We own these buildings. Do you understand that? We own the buildings and we pay all the people that work in the building. We finished with our meetings here at the White House this afternoon. We had, uh, had a great planning session for our January 6th objection. We aren't going to let this election be stolen by Joe Biden and the Democrats. President Trump won by a landslide. Call your House reps, call your senators from your states, We've got to make sure they're on board. We already have a lot of people engaged. Okay, stay tuned. All right. So you hear her telling the Trump supporters, get ready to launch an assault against the United States Capitol. All right. Those buildings belong to you. All you got to do now is wait for your commander in chief, Donald J. Trump, a.k.a. the modern day Jefferson Davis, to give you the orders. So what, what happened next? Well, you all guessed it. Um, Donald Trump finds Mike Pence and says, Pence, hey, buddy, old pal, I got everything in motion. I got the fake elector scheme in motion, and I got my soldiers waiting for me at the ellipse. This is what he does. I need you to do that thing we asked you to do, Mike Pence. Don't you dare certify those votes for Joe Biden. 
Mike Pence, he grew a little spine and he says, unfortunately, I can't do that, Mr. President, because in order for me to do that, that would require me to place you above the United States Constitution, a document that our founding fathers and our framers fought and bled for, a document that to this day, Americans continue to bleed, to, to, to bleed for. And he goes, Mike Pence, Donald Trump goes, you know what, Mike Pence, you know what your problem is? You're a little too honest. He leans in, his breath is smelling like Big Macs and Diet Coke. And he says, you know what you are? And he called him the nasty P word. You know, the same P word you Christians heard him using in the Access Hollywood tape right before you voted for him. All right, I'll take care of this myself. Security, he tells his Secret Service, take me to the Ellipse to be with my soldiers. Secret Service, they tell him, they say, hey, these people are armed to the T. They got weapons, all right? I'm, we're serious weapons. Metal whips, chains, baseball bats, guillotines. These folks are intentionally trying to cause harm, all right? Mr. President, we just don't think it's safe for you to go there. As a matter of fact, they got this new thing called demon spray. Trump goes, what's demon spray? Oh, it's pepper spray, bear spray, you know, wasps. Spray, you put some orange dye in it and spray a little prayer over it, right? And then what ends up happening is if you spray people with it, they get in injected and possessed with the MAGA demon. Donald Trump says, really? They got that? Yes, Mr. President. He goes, I don't care. Take me to be with my soldiers. Yes, Mr. President. And so we all saw this moment, ladies and gentlemen, in American history when Donald Trump made it to the ellipse. He got on stage. And what did he do? He encouraged his supporters to engage in heinous acts of violence. Now it is up to Congress to confront this egregious assault on our democracy. And after this, we're going to walk down and I'll be there with you. We're going to walk down. We're going to walk down anyone you want, but I think right here we're going to walk down to the Capitol and we're going to cheer on our brave senators and congressmen and women and we're probably not going to be cheering so much for some of them because you'll never take back our country with weakness. You have to show strength and you have to be strong. So that's Donald Trump encouraging his soldiers to get ready to fight, all right? And it wasn't just that that they heard. They heard all these other remarks, right? And we fight. We fight like hell. And if you don't fight like hell, you're not going to have a country anymore. We will never give up. We will never concede. It doesn't happen. You don't concede when there's death involved. So we will never give Let's have trial by combat. And we fight. We fight like hell. And if you don't fight like hell, you're not going to have a country anymore. So you can hear Donald Trump encouraging his supporters to get ready to attack the United States Capitol. All right. And, and, and he was radicalizing them as well. Um, and, and to give you a good example of who he was radicalizing, how many of you know who this woman is? You know who Ashley Babbitt is. Listen to what Ashley Babbitt was saying, ladies and gentlemen. And you tell me what she radicalized. District, why don't you worry about your own goddamn district and the shit that's going on there? You are a complete, re you, you, I'm telling you right now, I'm putting all you on notice. Every single one of you politicians in California, Gavin Newsom, Jerry Brown, Maxine Waters, Duncan Hunter, what the hell is Kamala? Where is Kamala? Talking about ISIS like KKK. We got this modern camera. You know what? We have thousands of people on the other side of the board. If people can't get to work, our economy is going to take an because you guys refuse to choose America, America over your stupid political party. Capital and a mob, there's an estimated over 3 million people here today. So despite what the media tells you, boots on ground definitely say something different. There is a sea of nothing but red, white, and blue hatred to Trump. A sea of nothing but red, white, and blue patriots for Donald Trump. Look at her. She's covered in all that MAGA paraphernalia. Fully indoctrinated, radicalized, uh, one of Donald Trump's foot soldiers ready to pay the ultimate price for Donald Trump, all right? And many of you know exactly what the ultimate price was for Miss Ashley Babbitt, all right? Uh, we all remember this moment 
where Ashley Babbitt lost her life, right? We all remember this, right? Thank you. Thank you, DJ. That's right before Ashley Babbitt lost her life in the battlefield for Donald Trump, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, this is the crime scene January 6th that millions of us witnessed and watched on national television. This wasn't a peaceful protest like BLM. This was a domestic terrorist attack, right? This was a plan of di uh, just disgusting evilness planned by Donald Trump all the way down to... His foot soldiers, you know, the Patriot, the Patriot Front, the Proud Boys, all these groups. This was an attack on the United States government. All right. This was a crime scene. This wasn't a tourist visit that had gone awry. And this is why I will continue to bring up January 6th, even though they don't like it when I do. Because I have to remind these folks what really happened. All right. And so with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, you know what we must do. We must have, I must provide you with another update uh, about another J6er that has been brought to justice. I mean, this, 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 this is, ladies and gentlemen, it, it never ends. It never ends. There's always a Trump supporter being brought to justice for what happened on January 6th. A Trump supporter from Tulsa has pled guilty to a misdemeanor of illegally going inside the United States Capitol during the January 6th riot. Trisha Monique LeCount, 54, acknowledged in writing that she was in the Capitol for an hour and 14 minutes. She also acknowledged she later described then House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's office on social media as so gaudy. She pleaded guilty Wednesday in federal court in Washington, D.C. to entering and remaining in a restricted building. Sentencing is now set for October 18th. U.S. District Judge Reggie Walton will decide her punishment. She faces up to a year in prison and a $100,000 fine. She has agreed to pay $500 in restitution. All right. This is what I'm talking about, ladies and gentlemen. Donald Trump set these people up. And, and took advantage of them. And now they're throwing their lives away. They're throwing their freedom away for this man. And I don't know why. I don't know what they get out of it. But you know what? We're going to take care of business like we normally do. Number one, ladies and gentlemen, join me in giving the seditionist, treasonous traitor what she deserves. A round of booze and shame. <laughs> All right, and since she wanted to be a soldier so bad, let's send her off the old-fashioned way. I'd like to begin by addressing the heinous attack on the United States Capitol. Like all Americans, I am outraged by the violence, lawlessness, and mayhem. I immediately deployed the National Guard and federal law enforcement to secure the building and expel the intruders. Mm. America is and must always be a nation of law and order. The demonstrators who infiltrated the Capitol have defiled the seat of American democracy. To those who engage in the acts of violence and destruction, you do not represent our country. And to those who broke the law, you will pay. You hear that, ladies and gentlemen? To those of you who listened to Donald Trump and ended up in Washington, D.C. on January 6th, get this. You do not represent this country. You broke the law. And you will pay. When are you Trump supporters going to get it? When are you going to wake up and understand that this guy is playing you like a fiddle? He doesn't care about you. All he wants to do is take your money. You know, they like to say the rest of the world is laughing at the United States. I got to clear that up. The rest of the world isn't laughing at the United States, ladies and gentlemen. They're laughing at MAGA.
You know why they're laughing at MAGA? Because you're all in a circus. And it's the biggest circus ever known to mankind. I promise you. It is. And who's the ringmaster? Oh, this guy. The con man in chief. All right. The snake oil salesman. All right. This guy, the way he does you all, I'm telling you, I've never seen anything like this in my life. Think about it. He does exactly what a clown does. Right, Tom? Tom knows everything that I'm about to say. Tom, what does he do? A clown wears makeup. Guess what, Tom? Look at this guy. He wakes up every morning and puts on that orange makeup. Ooh, don't I look so good? <laughs> Can't make this stuff up. A clown puts on a wig. This knucklehead every day puts on that bird's nest and he just smacks it right there on his cranium. Oh, my goodness. My supporters are going to get a thrill out of this. I've never seen anything like this in my life. Then, you know, a clown puts on that that ridiculous suit with that thing around its waist. And I said, then I said, and I said, I had to sit there one day and I had to watch Donald Trump because I studied this guy. And I said, wow, this man is literally doing the exact same thing a clown does. He actually puts the diaper on and puts on that crumpled blue suit right? And that ridiculous tie. And I said, oh my God, Donald Trump is running a circus. This is what I had to tell. I had to come. I, no one told me this. I'm looking at it. And I said, what? And then I, I said, you know what? It's not a circus. It can't be. But then he came out with those golden shoes. And I said, after the golden shoes, after the Bibles that he sell, I said, oh, huh. Do his supporters even know that? Because you don't need golden shoes anywhere except in a circus. You don't need that so-called, the Bible's free. You can go to any hotel and get the Bible for the most part. At least at least last I checked you could. Or you could go on your smartphone and read it. All right. So he's selling Bibles. He's selling golden shoes. I'm not making this up. He sells steaks. What else does Donald Trump sell? NFTs, yeah. Trump bucks, diapers, yeah. Donnie depends. And his customers are the ones that wear the red hats and hang out on TikTok, happily married, 32 years. You know who these people are. And they hang out on TikTok every day promoting his lies. I said, wow, wow, wow. It is a circus. Do you Trump supporters get it now? He's playing you like a fiddle. And if you do not get out of this cult that you're in, I don't know how you ended up there. I think a lot of you got into the cult because you've seen him on TV, right? You saw that TV show Apprentice. Remember that? You said, or you may have seen him in Home Alone, you know, with Macaulay Culkin, you know, Kevin, you know, Kevin. And then you've seen Donald Trump and you're like, this guy is the man. So you've been radicalized. But look at what's happened now. Now you know that that successful businessman all along has been a fraud. Look at what happened in New York. Not just with the convictions, but look at what they did to his businesses. His CFO's in prison. Michael Cohen had to go to prison. All right, he's been fined half a billion dollars. Wow, yeah, this is a he's been running a fraudulent business. Then you find out. He's been convicted, and you know this woman, Stormy Daniels, who he was having an affair with behind Melania's back. Now you're having to deal with that. It's all a sham. It's all it's all make-believe, ladies and gentlemen. And you Trump supporters are still falling for it. If you don't get out of that cult, like I've said, if you do not get out of this cult Donald Trump has put you in, you will get the ultimate MAGA reward. Does anyone know what the ultimate MAGA reward is? Let me make it clear. The ultimate MAGA reward is jail. And if you do not get your soul right, hell. With a chapter 11 in between. And I promise you, every single one of you Trump supporters will get it unless you get out of the cult. And I do mean that, all right? Now listen, ladies and gentlemen, let me open up the boxes. That concludes my monologue. That concludes my monologue, ladies and gentlemen. Let's open up the boxes and hear from those of you who are brave enough to get in the box and tell the truth and shame the devil, all right? And you know what this is. This is not an opportunity for you to get up here and uh, try to try to tell me I'm wrong. If you believe I'm wrong about something, you know the drill. Uh, 
bring the screenshot to support whatever it is that you're talking about. Because if you don't bring the, 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 the screenshot, it just to me seems like we're arguing about your opinion about a lot of stuff. And I don't got time to do that in the morning show. You know, get in and get out. You know, you get three minutes. All right. To say what you got to say. Oh, my goodness. Why is my thing stuck? Alrighty then. All right, we're gonna we're gonna try this again. Yeah, I think my phone is once again glitching. I I think I I don't know what the heck's going on. All right, but let's get it started, ladies and gentlemen. All right, we don't have much time to get it started and get up out of here. Let's move it along. Alrighty then. Let's see what we got here. All right, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Ooh, who do we got? Who do we got? Who do we got? All right. Uh, good. Welcome to the show. I'm not the only one having problems. All right. Yeah. I, you know, TikTok is always like that. Uh, Millwood, greetings. How are you? Millwood, are you there? Millwood, I cannot hear you. Going once, going twice, gone. Millwood, all right. Old Man Labor, greetings. How are you? Greetings. I don't know what the heck is talking. Uh, old Man Labor, greetings. How you doing? Greetings. I All have right. one. I have uh, one question for you, right? Two questions, actually. Well, well this is our first time doing business, right? <laughs> it's the second time. Oh, I was okay. on like two weeks ago, or something like that. Uh, why, how come I'm not following this account? Why, what happened? <laughs> Maybe so you're a Trump supporter. I am a independent. However, I see the danger of Trump, and I will never support him. As a result. Uh, especially that he says the left is dangerous and it's going to destroy this country. Mm. And um, I'm a left leaning, uh, you know, uh, person. And it kind of disgusted me also with them. Why haven't they called out the media? Nobody has called for Donald Trump to step down. Not even after January 6th, not even after he was convicted in New York. Not once, but they keep calling for Joe Biden to step down. So now I see Joe Biden as an anti-establishment candidate, and I, I think I'm going to lean his way, you know? <laughs> and I wasn't supporting him, you know? Because it shows, really? me that, it shows me that the DNC, uh, like, doesn't respect the people and doesn't respect people's opinion, and they're really trying to push this guy out because of his age and also the, the mega donors and all the people in the Democratic Party. So it shows me there's something that they don't like about him he's he's uh pushing back on them really so i like that fact that he's pushing back on them and not letting them bully him yeah um and um so that's why i you know yeah. i was i was gonna vote third party but i think i'm gonna throw my support behind uh, uh biden wow 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 so let me ask this question then what why is it important to you to have someone that's anti-establishment because we clearly seen how the big donors and the big money has penetrated our political system mm. and has overshadowed the voice of the people. Mm. So that's the problem. I, and wow. so I always supported Bernie Sanders and every time they railroaded him and they knew that Bernie Sanders had a big chance of beating Trump. Mm -hmm. But they kept railroading him because they were scared of the money and uh, giving workers a second chance. They were scared of that. And they yes. decided to railroad him because they thought that he might actually pass some rules for the everyday working people. Yeah. And that's, that's the biggest fear, right? The yeah. biggest fear of the billionaires and the millionaires is that the working people get a fair share and they're no longer millionaires and billionaires. Mm. So wow. they don't like the fact that minorities, I'm Latino. All right. Um, what part of the country fair, are you in? Get a fair share. I'm in New York City. All right. Shout out to New York. Uh, I mean, you know, you, I'm going to be honest. I'm, you've blown my mind quite a bit with that, with your position that you're, which you're, that you're taking, right? So you yeah. don't think RFK uh, is a viable option? RFK is pulling at 8%. And I like the, the things that he says, but he's falling at 8%. For the chances of him coming and gaining 50% of the vote is like 
bad, you know? And I don't think he's going to get on every state's ballot. That's the problem. I don't think he's going to get on every state's ballot. They're pushing back on him. They establish me. They're not letting him speak or letting him get on the ballot. And he only raised $2.5 million last month, which is very low. So that means that even the and his top donor is uh, is Donald Trump's top donor. So, so it, to you, it doesn't. It's not like it's going to have really any impact to even support RFK compared to what you're trying to get done legislatively. That, well, if that, uh, uh, RFK so anti-establishment, why is his top donor the same as Donald Trump's top donor? Yeah. You understand? Yeah, that yeah, tells yeah. me that they're trying to sabotage. They're trying to sabotage uh, Joe Biden. Period. Yeah. They're just trying to sabotage Joe Biden. So, and, so let me ask this um, question. And, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me ask this question. So between now and then, now that yeah. you're kind of leaning towards Joe Biden, is there anything that Biden can do to cause you to not want to cause you to not want to support him going forward? Um. Because if he gets I'm, charged with a crime, okay. if he uh, causes the insurrection in the Capitol, if he's linked to, um, if he lies to the American people repeatedly, um, if uh, if his people uh, support or have worked for Project 2025, I, I will be alarmed. Because okay. Project 2025 even alarmed me and scared me because they want to wipe out any um, people that are on the left or have leftist views. They want uh, marriage to be between a man and a woman. I mm. think it's everyone's yeah. freedom of choice. Yeah. Um, I don't yeah. think God even intervenes and tells people uh, how they should vote or right. what religion they should follow. I right. think it's freedom of choice. The same thing with women's rights. I think oh, it's up to a woman to make that decision, what they want to do with their body. It's yeah. not the government's job to do it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I also believe that, um, you know, you can't um, outlaw pornography like um Project oh, 2025. You mean corn, corn, corn. Sorry, corn, corn, corn. Yeah, yeah, corn, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't corn. You know, some people are in there, you know, you got to keep it clean. Well, yeah, listen. corn. All right. That's yeah. crazy. It's yeah. bizarre. It gets bizarre. When you read it, read it more and more, Project 2025. And on top of that, being a minority, he wants to lock people up for life and give them the, the um, uh, ultimate uh, unaliving by the government. Wow. Uh, which is even bizarre for a minority to even say I support Trump and I'm proud of 2025 is him or yep. him and all his people. Hey, and it's you're right. It is. So right now, now, listen, brother, thank yeah. you so much. I got to move it on, but you're spot thank on. You. And again, uh, you know, you, you, you've changed my opinion about something out there. I got to do some more thinking, though. But and I'm a, this- and I, and I'm a Democratic Socialist. And, and, um, and I, this guy is more dangerous than anyone else. Trust me. Yeah. He yeah. wants to ban us, period. He doesn't want us in the light. He doesn't want us talking about workers. It's, it, it, it's crazy. Ban unions, ban all. It's, it's, it gets real deep, real fast. Yeah. And um, people got to wake up. That's all. Thank you, Zeus, for joining right. for letting me have, be on. Okay? All right, all right, all right. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give old men labor a round of applause. <laughs> That was that was quite uh, impressive, to be quite honest. Uh, you know, to think of President Biden as anti-establishment because of the way the Democrats are going after him. That right there, that's kind of a unique angle uh, in terms of kind of making it clear who you should get behind. And so, uh, Old Man Labor, thank you. Thank you so much for pointing that out. All right, all right. Who do we got next? All right, good morning, Tracy. How are you doing, Tracy? I'm good. How are you? Uh, I, I'm all right. Happy Monday. Yes. Happy Monday to you. Yeah. I wanted to um, point something out. I put it in the comments. Um, there is a website that is called democracyforward.org. Um, democracyforward.org. And it gives a summary of the highlights of Project 2025. It breaks it down to where it's easier to look at easier to read because we all know project 2025 is like 925 pages Correct. a lot of people don't want to go and read all of that uh, but this gives accurate a summary if you go to the top it says something about um project 2025 and it says more info and you click that and it lists it all the way down 
Yeah. I think that I think so. Um, I found it very helpful. Um, I also wanted to make clear that there is a tweet from 2018 where Donald Trump is talking about the Heritage Foundation and how they told him that he had already reached 65 percent of the Trump goals. Oh. And how he is was did it better and faster than even Reagan. And that is according to names the president of the Heritage Foundation. It's in his Twitter from 2018 while he wow. was president. So for him to say that he doesn't know who the Heritage Foundation is or what Project 2025 is, is absolute dog crap. <laughs> you and don't buy it. You don't do buy, it. buy it. I do not buy it. And there's yeah. also a video of him speaking at the Heritage Foundation about what a great. Uh, I saw uh, it. Yep. So I would I would invite anybody who is still supporting uh, Little Donnie Two Scoops, you know, the Mango Mussolini, the Orange Cheeto, uh, yeah. to go out and find those uh, and look for look at it yourself because we're not saying it, he's saying it. Yeah. He's just trying to dig himself out of a very very deep hole that he has found himself in because he is backing a a, a Christian white nationalist authoritarian uh, project that was co-written and authored by something the, like 40 no, of can his, you repeat the uh the website again tracy sorry people are asking democracyforward.org i can i can type it in the comments it is a very good uh um Thank you, place to go to uh get the uh information in in a synopsis or in a summary for project 2025 yeah um it's i read through it and i thought it was very helpful so I i'm looking i'm looking there. at it right now and yeah uh things like rolling back civil right protections across multiple fronts uh dangerous right and you can see they're already trying to do that they they are ag absolutely already trying to do that they uh started with uh rolling back roe v wade uh, the recent de the Chevron decision overturning Chevron, they're already hitting the high notes. So if you think SCOTUS is uh, is an actual uh, Supreme Court, it is not. It is illegitimate. They are making decisions based <laughs> on what Project 2025 wants them to do. Tracy, uh, Doozy in the chat says 2025 is Biden's plan. Nothing <laughs> to do with Trump. Could you address could you address a doozy? Uh, if you don't mind there, uh, the, the president of the heritage foundation did an interview on MSNBC and he repeatedly says we are for Trumpism. They want Trumpism, meaning that yeah. their project 2025 is based on Trump getting in office. So if you don't, like I said, you don't have to believe us. You don't have to believe Zeus. You can go to directly to the horse's mouth and hear it. Um, it, it, he said in the interview, it was offered to Biden and Biden categorically said, absolutely not. So I, I don't know what else to tell you. You could go to Donald Trump, uh, Donald J Trump dot com or dot org or whatever it is. It's his campaign website and watch his agenda 47 videos where he literally hits the highlights of project 2025 of what he plans to do. Should he become president? When someone tells you something, believe them. We're not saying it. We're just the we're just the messengers pointing to where to get the actual information from the actual person. So don't mm. believe us. Go to the source. I Thank don't know you. what else to tell you. If you Thank can't you. if you can't believe what you see and what you hear, you know, quit saying that's not what he meant. That's not you're taking out content. No, we're not. We're actually watching what he says. In all of his orange makeup and all of his orange glory. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. Oh my gosh, you're spot on, Tracy. Listen, I don't know what to say, but you're right. Tell these people again to go look it up, democracyforward.org, all right, and become informed. Don't take our word for it. Seriously, folks. Any yes, last please. words, Tracy? Uh, just uh, never Trump. Uh, vote Biden for democracy. Um, when you talk about anything, talk about policy, talk about legislation, talk about facts. If they try to drag you down with their whataboutism, just keep redirecting the conversation back to, back to legislation, policy, and facts. 
Bingo, bingo. Fair enough. Well, Tracy, listen, thank you so, so much for having the courage to be able to get up here and tell the truth and shame oh, the devil. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give it up to the beautiful Tracy. Bye, Jules. Have a good day, Kingdom. All right, you too. All right, so as you can see, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we keep getting the truth out there, and we still have some people in my chat. You believe it or not, they still believe Donald Trump and the things that he is saying. So doozy. Uh, um, Kim, Kim, uh, Tracy didn't insult anyone. I don't know where you heard that, but you got to quit doing that, Kim. All right, just listen. All right, you might learn something. Doozy, make sure you go back wherever you gather your facts and information and you tell them you were in Zeus's live today and that Donald Trump actually is a lot closer to Project 2025 than you realized, all right? And, and, and then you can go to democracyforward.org and verify what's actually in there, all right? It's, it's easy to follow, all right, Doozy? I have a high degree of confidence that you will pull through. Let's bring up our next panelist. Who do we got? Oh my goodness. All right, who do we have this time? Pittsburgh Tools for Life. Greetings. Hello. Hello. How are you? Hi. Hello. How are you? This is our first time doing business? Yes, sir. All right. I got some questions to ask and just to figure out where you are and yeah. then we'll move on. All right. First question. Do you believe Donald Trump's claims that the 2020 election was rigged? I believe that man doesn't have a living brain cell smart enough to tell him that it it was. All right. <laughs> If you had to, is there? Could you? Could you uh, put? If you had to find one person who's solely responsible for the attack on the Capitol on January six, who would that be? Uh, Donald Trump himself. You're good. You're good. Last question: Do you know of any evidence that proves President Biden is a criminal? Well, what are you talking about? There's no evidence. Hey, let's go. That's the hardest question. That's the wait, hardest wait, question. Wait, hold on. Wait, that's the Thank hardest you. question? That was the hardest question. A oh lot of people. Oh, my God. I feel so bad for your ears when nobody can answer that. <laughs> so I'll give you a bit of background here. Um, I, I was young and dumb once. Uh, okay. First time voting. I had just moved. I wanted out of my father's house. And um, I have two fathers, by the way. So this goes very much against what um, I believed in at the time. Um, mm -hmm. I, was a, I was an outdoorsman. I voted for Trump in 2020. And after oh. everything happened with J6 and then Pence coming out and saying the stuff he did and reviewing everything from 2016 when he was in office, um, it was probably one of the biggest mistakes of my life. What? Yep. I met my husband Wait. and I changed. I'm still Republican. Wait a second. But... You're, so you're you're still Republican. But I, 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 my neighbors are the same way from where I grew up. And they said... Um, the Republican Party has left us. Mm. And I, I firmly believe that. I got, I'm got. i kind of going back to where I was in high school. I was a very libertarian mindset, um, but would still vote blue. Mm. Um, and having gay fathers and being gay myself, um, after I voted, I was like, okay, we'll be okay. Everything happened. I was like, all right, you know, this will blow over. It won't be too big of an issue. And then all of the BS that Trump started spewing was like, wow, I voted for this idiot. Hmm. Wow. Why? What, what made you feel like voting for Trump initially in 2020? So I'm a big 2A advocate. Mm -hmm. um, one of the biggest things that I wanted to see, uh, which probably wasn't going to happen, was New York State go to constitutional carry. Mm. Um, which I, I working in that industry, I realized later on it wasn't it was never gonna happen. Um Thank you, Bamba. Got it, got yeah, it. So. Got it. Okay, and so you voted for him. Um and did you were you fully indoctrinated? Were you MAGA you know, were you fully MAGA at one point? No. No, I okay. would I I, I I I would always question I always question everything because I'm I'm uh, ADHD. So mm -hmm. I always have to question whether whether it's factual or false. I always have to question it because I mm -hmm. always have to make sure that, OK, what I'm hearing is what I'm hearing. OK, and that's the truth. So has there been any uh, have you told the people in your circle that you're no longer supporting Donald Trump? Um, yeah, they, they pretty much know. Mm -hmm. um, 
I haven't told them that I voted for him. That's the issue. Um, oh. Because it's my two fathers. Um, they they asked me right after, and I said, I'm going to, I'm just, I'm not going to say, I'm not going to talk about it. Mm. Because that, that's how, how long after I realized, wow, I, uh, pardon the language, but I fucked up. Oh, yeah. No, hold on. Yeah, we keep it clean. We got to keep it clean. Right. Right. language like i said you know but that's that was uh that, so that, how that went. so you were ashamed to tell your fathers you voted for donald trump oh yeah still yeah. Am. i still, still am. wow wow i mean i'm taking your word for it but you know i'm just concerned uh oh, yeah. that you uh so going forward uh, is it safe to say that you'll be endorsing or you know voting for president biden I, I 100% will be voting for somebody that is choosing to keep LGBTQ rights. Does that mean Biden, though? Available. Sorry? That meant Biden, right? Yes. All yep. right. I just want yep. to make sure. <laughs> yeah, I caught that. You see that? He said somebody. I said, uh, uh, that sounded like a little tricky answer. But if you no, say Biden. Apologize. Okay, because no, we're watching it's you. Biden all the way. It's Biden all the way. No. Um. And uh, and just to those that are thinking like, oh, maybe I should support Trump. It's not hard to change. Mm. It's not hard to, you know, in a sense, put yourself back in a school setting and learn something. What would you say is the first thing these Trump supporters, because there's still people out here, right, in my yep. chat, and they're going, you're wrong, uh, Pittsburgh, you're wrong. You abandoned Donald Trump when he needed you the most. All right, but if you would have just hung in there, you would have seen the light. What do you say to those folks? Because there's some of them out here like doozy. Um, I, I, I'm going to tell them that if they're still going to support somebody that says, I don't care about you, I just want your vote. I, I, I think you really need to have a, as they say, a come to Jesus moment. Mm. Because he, that, that man could care less about you. Um, my grandfather was a World War II vet, and when uh, Trump said that uh, veterans are suckers and losers, that mm. kind of was like, wow, okay, so first Thank you. he come after BIPOC. I'm also yep. Hispanic, so he came after, he, you know, he called us the worst names. I'm not going to repeat those words. You can't, you can't, no. yeah, you can't yep. even say some of the stuff he says yep. about, on, yep. says on, on, you can't say it on TikTok, right. Seriously, well, listen. Yeah. Yeah, well, listen, thank you so much, Pittsburgh. I got to move on, my, my friend. Yeah, All right? I gave Appreciate you, I'm giving it. you a follow, and I hope hope you could keep coming back here and, and sharing uh, your experience getting away from Donald Trump so that some of those who are here and want to do the same thing can learn from you. All right, my friend? Yeah, yeah I got you, man. All right, all right, ladies and gentlemen, let's give Pittsburgh a round of applause. <laughs> Listen, we're here and we're setting the captive free, ladies and gentlemen. Now, I seen hey man, some y'all have a good one. All right, you too. I seen some people out there who are who are not uh, in agreement. All right, and I'm just a little concerned. Uh, Maga Queen, why don't you come on up here, Maga Queen, and and explain to us how we're wrong and you're right, Maga Queen, because it does no good, right? It does Donald Trump no good for you to just say it in the chat you know what i'm saying come on up here uh maga queen and tell us all uh why we're wrong and, and you're right all right maga queen oh you're afraid to come on up here and face face zeus all right well you know what this means ladies and gentlemen uh let's give maga queen ladies and gentlemen what she deserves i'm assuming it's a she uh because their name is maga queen right uh a round of booze and shame because they are brave enough to lie in the chat, but they're cowards when it comes to getting in the box and telling the truth. Let's give her some booze and shame. Oh, Hi, Maga Queen. Bye, Maga Queen. All right, you you know that we're telling the truth. You're just afraid to get in the box and admit it. All right. Uh, good morning, Jess. How are you doing this lovely, uh, what's today? Yeah, Monday. How are you doing? Happy Monday. Happy I hope you're doing Monday. well. All right. So I kind of wanted to piggyback off of what Tracy was saying um, about Project 2025. Okay. Um, now, to Donald Trump, for him to say that he doesn't know is absolutely mind boggling to me because look at this right here. This is off of the Heritage Foundation website, right? Mm. This is 
Paul Dan's, okay, Paul Dan's was, um, prior to joining the Heritage Foundation, he served in the Trump administration as chief of staff at the U.S. Mm-hmm. Office of Personnel Management. And then you have Victoria Coates, this lady right here. Right. Talk and, about her. Uh, she has experience as the National Security Advisor in Congress mm. at the White House. This wow. was also during the Trump administration. You hear this, Doozy? Are you, are you watching, Doozy? And then to uh, Stephen Miller. Uh, I can't play the video here. I don't have my other device, Doozy. but Stephen Miller been around for decades. He posted on Twitter saying, "Oh, your uh, candidate has pudding for brains, right?" But he got community noted, and people in the comments were posting the ad for Project Twenty Twenty Five. Oh. And guess who was in there? Who? Guess who was in the video for Project Twenty Twenty Five? Let me take a guess. Stephen freaking. Miller. Mm. So three people that worked in Trump's administration and Trump hired are working on there. And he is friends with Kevin Roberts. And Kevin Roberts, like uh, Tracy said, he wants to install Trumpism. That's what they said. It is a new uh, conservative uh, name. They're calling it Trumpism. And they want to make that a thing. Wow. Wow. So to sit here and say that he does not know. Matter of fact, there is a video of Kevin Roberts thanking Donald Trump and his administration and his great friend, Paul Dans, Mm. for working on Project 2025 the day after Joe Biden went into office. Now, fast forward to that video on MSNBC Uh uh, with that whole thing. I watched the entire thing. He said he has given Project 2025 to every president, including Joe Biden. He said he wants to give every candidate a briefing. Mm. Mm. But you worked on this with Trump and his team the day after Joe Biden went into office? Mm. Wow. What? You, are, so, 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 so it sounds to me, uh, Jess, it sounds to me like, hold on. It sounds to me like Donald Trump maybe has bad memory. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, maybe maybe he needs to step down because something's going on up there where he's just not fully present. Yeah, right? I think he needs a cognitive test. Because you would remember stuff like this. And if he doesn't remember, we can't trust him with the nuclear codes, right? Yeah, right, specifically the nuclear codes. I mean, it better not be on the life alert button. <laughs> Might get him mixed up. Oh, uh, no, 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 Doozy. Joe doesn't have dementia, but it's starting to seem like I'm not a medical expert, Doozy. But if you don't remember meeting with all these people. Oh, <laughs> well, you know Project what's funny? 25, something's Hold on. Wrong. Before I go, I want to address Pyro Joe's comment because he said it's been around <clears throat> since the 80s. And you're absolutely correct. It's been around for a long time. There's also a video of Kevin Roberts saying that he is the or that they are the biggest conservative organization in America. And every conservative candidate gets run past them. Mm. Not only that, in Donald Trump's last uh term in 2016 to 2019 uh he embraced two-thirds of the policies that the heritage foundation had recommended Mm. two-thirds out of 334 uh policy recommendations wow so anyways he is friends with all the aspirants that want to be candidates in the future he gets all the candidates ran past him and to that guy that said he is going to be voting for biden now kudos to you because the campaign manager for rfk has actually said on a video that their common enemy is joe biden and they don't care if trump gets in office so anyways i'm gonna shut up now oh also ABC sabotaged um, Joe Biden's sound. They did. 
they did. So I want everyone to to go look that up if you have the time. I'm going to be uploading the clips today as well. Um, but Joe Biden or anyone on their team, if you're listening to this, don't let anyone set up your guys' equipment besides you. Um, anyways, have a great day. All righty then. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's give it up to the beautiful Jess. No lies detected. All right. All right. All right. Yes. Yes, ladies and gentlemen. All right. As you can see, we're delivering uh, an overwhelming amount of truth on a, on a Monday morning. It's quite the show. You know, I didn't expect it. You know, I was supposed to just be in and out, but you all have been bringing it. And I think that is uh, amazing. All right. Seriously. Uh, let's move it along, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to bring up our next panelist. Oh, my goodness. Oh, oh my God. This we Another one bites the dust. Uh, Tom, what's going on? So it seems like there's a lot of excuses about Joe Biden lately. Okay. Oh, my God. Uh, and what is, it, what is it to you? You're not voting for him. Right? Because you, you, you seem to think that we make all the, these excuses for Trump. Hey, I don't because I'm not voting for color it. Shirt? But you, you guys color seem to be making a hell of a lot me? of excuses for Joe Biden right now. Did you try to match me in terms of your shirt color? I mean, sir, come no. on. Get your own swag, all right? I get what you're trying to do. <laughs> so, but, but you never did answer my question. What is your question? If Joe Biden, if you're saying that he was sick and tired during the debate, what about the other three and a half years when he fumbled stumbled, uh, gaffed, and all these other things. Was he sick and tired then, too? <laughs> I don't know what the heck you are referring to. Number one, who told you? All the videos of where he can't form a complete sentence in the last three and a half years. I don't know which videos you're talking about. When he's tried about. to shake hands with people that weren't there, when he's wandered off and had to be brought back, when they have to strategically place people when he's walking to keep him from wandering off. Do, let me ask you a serious question, Tom. Do you really think joe biden is not there you think he's letting someone else think for him and do these things yeah he went and jill do all his do all his thinking for him. you think so or, and, and hunter he's letting hunter and jill decide all of his so, decisions so so how how is who is rallying our allies to stand up against russia you think jill biden is doing that if i if oh no he has people in place to do that hold on no he has people in place to do that if you're saying Hold Joe on. Biden I didn't, is doing I didn't it. say that. I, okay, I, so well, take it back. He has Joe and Hunter to give him advice, but they are talking to his advisors and they are doing what they need to do. Let's 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 let me ask the audience, okay? Because I do you trust poll numbers? No, I don't. <laughs> so how do you know when you're wrong, Tom? Because how do you I know when you're will admit wrong? when I'm wrong. I no, will admit when know, I'm wrong. How do you know when you're wrong? Sir, in all because in all I, respect, I, I, like, I, give, I me an, give me an example in real life when you were wrong and, and how you found out you were wrong and then what you did. I'm just curious because I've uh, never met see. a Trump supporter. Uh, I've never met a Trump supporter that could admit they were wrong. I, have, I said something on my live the other night. And when I think I when I say something and I'm not exactly sure if it's correct or not, I will research what I say. And mm -hmm. if you've been in my lives, you will you will know I've said, hey, I was wrong. I'll admit yeah. when I'm wrong. But, but I'm not a Democrat. Realize, I can be how, wrong. How, how did you realize that you were wrong? That was the question. Because what I said was not right. Did, did, did anyone point it out to you you were wrong? No, I pointed you... it out to myself. <laughs> That's the problem. What, self-checking yourself is wrong? Well, what do you do when other people tell you you're wrong and you don't trust? Do you don't you don't trust what other people say when they? I tell say you? I will look into it, and if I'm wrong, I wouldn't. I will admit I'm wrong. Oh, so but you have to be the one to verify whether you're wrong. It can't be anyone else. That's kind of how you if, operate. Okay, unlike unlike you, um, I do make people show their proof, and I show my own proof. I say what I'm reading, who it's from, when it was written, when it was released. You have a problem with not being able to do that. I don't know why you can't show proof, but I mean, that's, that's your show, though. That's but, your but show. Tom, You're allowed to Tom, do that. But Tom, Tom, here's no. the thing, though. Even if I showed the proof, your personality type is such that, right, you're not going to believe it. How do you know that? You just, because you just said no one can pretty much tell you you're wrong. You have to go independently verify whatever it okay, is. And if you showed me something and I went and looked at it, and I found out that I was wrong, I will admit I'm wrong. 
Yeah, you've been wrong about January. You can 6th. say I'm wrong all you want to, but you have to prove I'm wrong. I, I, I proved you've been wrong about January. No, you 6th. haven't. What have you? Right. What have you proven me wrong on? We'll save that for another day. No, Tom, you, no, because right? you can't. You so can't prove I'm wrong. We have. Uh, you can't I have to prove move I'm on, wrong. Tom. Oh my goodness, you've been wrong, Tom. Thank you so so much, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, Tom has showed his rear end on my show. So you know what we got to do, ladies and gentlemen. Let's give Tom what he wants. Another round of booze and shame. Oh, oh, he still oh, possessed with a maga oh, demon. Oh, Jesus Christ. You never yeah, that's the problem with a lot of the Trump supporters. Yeah, yeah, he's been cooked. Uh, that's the problem. A lot of the Trump supporters, uh, they know, they can't be told that they're wrong. All right, and and they will waste time trying to argue ridiculous points. I've never seen anything like this in my life, ladies and gentlemen. All right, uh, who do we got next? Good morning, Jason or Richardson. How are you doing? Jason, are you there? Jason Richardson, interesting. How are you doing? I'm good. What's going on, Zeus? Hey, I'm all right. It's our first time doing business. Uh, on your live, yes. Uh, so I've talked to you before. Interesting. Yeah, we were on. We were on another live. You remember the girl that was talking about? She paid seventeen hundred dollars. Oh for, yeah, uh, <laughs> for Hunter Biden's tra transcripts. Yeah, right. yeah. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. And even though we're in a, in a supposedly Biden's economy is ruining people's wallets right so for some strange reason she was able to pay seventeen hundred dollars to get those hunter biden transcripts i remember all right what brings you to the show uh, she was she was getting them unredacted if you wrote if you remember correctly that That's was correct. the main thing i've been yeah. looking ever since that i have found nowhere in any kind of evidence of anywhere on the internet that says a regular person like just a regular tom like me and you can just go get redacted transcripts unredacted if we just pay a little money I, listen that was her business i kind of just left it there but yeah it was definitely uh quite alarming that someone would be willing to invest seventeen hundred dollars into a, a government they don't trust just to get the transcripts on hunter biden and you know what they wanted right they wanted to find the dirt on joe biden in those transcripts right imagine that yeah. you were the one that paid seventeen hundred dollars to then find the dirt on joe biden that's what they were looking at hoping for yeah yeah definitely but you know one thing i do want to ask is so have you looked at the court filings from the young lady that was graped uh between with uh, uh epstein and trump uh i have why are we not talking about that i, I mean I, I i could care less i mean no nah, i'm not gonna say i could care less the 34 and I, you know the 34 counts he's the definite felon we know we all on that how can we vote for that person did if you read what those two men did to that girl how can we like as people like i don't and i don't care politically or not i cannot side you know that's like putting myself if, if i'm a vote for trump i'm putting myself on the side of the people that do those types of things you know you associate yourself with like-minded people that, that's just human nature you know it feels good it feels comfortable to associate associate yourself with like-minded people how do you associate yourself with a with a with two men one running for president that could do those things to that girl are there I mean, okay so let's was, let me let me get to that let's let's see uh so i'm a, that court document about katie johnson tying donald trump with jeffrey epstein was the most disgusting thing i read personally no and doubt. to think to think that this person was a president and is on the verge of possibly being re-elected is insane i can't believe donald trump still has support uh it's in particular i can't believe christians so-called christians are yes. still supporting him yes call him jesus the next jesus and everything like they say he's the you know he's the the the, the chosen one that's what they call him yeah come on man yeah come on it, but you could use you, you yeah but you yeah, also got to remember you, these are the same christians i'm sorry these are the same christians that uh put us in slavery and did it in, in jesus the name, name of god right in the name yeah. of the so, lord yeah yeah 
So we, you know, we can't. I brought this up, I brought this up to, to these Russian bears, one of the Russian bears that love to throw it in my face. They help kids and they follow Jesus. They love to throw it in my face. When I brought this up, they turned around and told me it was all a lie. This is what they told me. It's not true. They debunked it a long time ago and that this is the media trying to take Trump out. That's how they tried to spin this. What do you say to those folks who are out there trying to spin this to try to make it look like Donald Trump is the victim? <sighs> yep, I remember I, Little Hawk. That that's a that's a really tough question. Yes. <laughs> that, they they they're I, excusing this evil. That's justifying something that, evil. Yeah, to me that's something that is without question. You you know what I mean? It's like, oh, you do that. I mean, I look, I can I can overlook a lot of things. People make mistakes in life. People, you know, change. People, mm. you know, get older and re realize that, oh man, you know what I mean? That person is not who I want to be for, you know. I tell people all the time, uh Nobody, your life is like a book. Nobody ever remembers the beginning and the middle. They always yeah. remember the end. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. you can change, you can do all this. But one thing I can't just say, oh, it's okay, is people that do stuff to anyone, be it a child, be it an elderly person, be it a, 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 a disabled person, yeah. anyone that can take advantage of someone like that I don't care what I don't care what you're going through. I don't care. It it just that that is the most vile and the most just it just takes everything from that person, man. Just to, yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, it, it it just I mean, it even goes into where it changes a person's mentality. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. It just it's 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 terrible, man. It's terrible. Yeah. And and, yeah. and if you can align yourself with that at all, then me and you have nothing else to talk about. Bingo. Spot on. <laughs> Spot on, Jason, my man. All right, listen, I appreciate you uh, bringing that to the kingdom this morning and making sure people understand that just because the media is not covering it doesn't mean it's not important. It is. Oh important. yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. And 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 if you look at it, the reason that whole suit got dropped was because someone, and if you can see me, I put it in air quotes. Someone threatened her and her family, and she dropped it. Yeah. And we kind of already know who that someone is. Yeah, you already know. You yeah. already know. Hey, man, I, I appreciate you letting me up, Zeus, man. We'll, you know, we'll definitely talk again. I actually sent you a message after that uh, After that, that time we were in that other message. Like, hey, yeah. how do I get up in your live? And you oh, never really? responded. But I, yeah, yeah. But it, 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 you, it, I'm sure you get like a million. You probably <laughs> just spam through. You know, it's all good. It's all, all right. good. I know how to get there now, though. Now you do. Yeah. Come on and talk to Zeus in the show. That's usually the quickest way to get straight to me. But you're absolutely I got right. you. All right, my brother. All right, all right ladies and gentlemen, easy. let's give Jason Richardson a round of applause. No lies detected. Yeah, we're not going to we're going to continue to hold these people's feet to the fire. Yeah. Like I said, ever since I brought that back up, they don't want to talk to me. Oh, Zeus. Oh, uh, you're, you're being you're being too mean, Zeus. Please don't bring that up. You know, no, we're gonna keep talking about uh, your little nasty cult leader. All right, good morning, Straight Facts. What's going on? Hey, I am okay, and you? I'm doing just fine. But I wanted to show people something real quick because I know that this is gonna be out in the public like as if Joe Biden. Uh -oh skipped over this young lady right here. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I wanted I, everybody to see that Joe Biden clearly didn't skip over this young lady. So when you see this out here on the TikTok streets and on X, and they just locked up that video to say that he skipped over, you know that's a doggone lie. Hey, man, tell him. And I just wanted to go ahead on and talk about Mr. Tim Boy, or what's his name? Tommy Too Short, Too Oh, too Tiny Tank Top Tim, Tom, whatever his name oh, is. Oh, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he, said, he dressed up like he ain't today. been wrong about too much, Zeus. He said what? Are you froze, Zeus? I think Zeus is frozen. I'm can not. Can you frozen. guys hear me, or is it just me? I can hear you. Maybe can you it's hear just me? me. Can you hear me? There we go. Now can I'm you hear back. Me? 
Yes, I can hear okay, you. Okay, okay. I'm not frozen. I heard you. I was hearing you. Okay, cool. So he said that he wasn't wrong about anything. Tiny Tank Top 10, Tom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. He was wrong about that haircut. <laughs> he was wrong about that little tiny tink top, 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 top shirt. <laughs> but he Ooh. was also wrong about January 6th because what he said was... It was not. It was just a peaceful rally. Yeah. So, well, I could have swore it was called "Stop the Steal." <laughs> what was what steal was y'all trying to stop? Tom, tank top, Tim, Tom, where you at? Tank top, Tim, Tom. He just don't. I mean, they just don't think logically. Just like I said on my live. There Listen, Tell them. they think they really truly think to themselves that we are we we just we're not smart enough to understand that every Thing that we indict Trump for, you accuse Joe Biden of. Can Joe Biden have his own crimes? Yeah. Can y'all find a different crime to accuse him of? Yeah. Because you guys just copying mm -hmm. of what we've already shown that Trump mm -hmm. is yeah. doesn't make a lot of sense to us. We understand that you guys are wrong about everything that you guys do. Now, speaking of wrong, uh -huh. The biggest wrong was exactly what you said. They allowed themselves to be conned by a con artist on the night of the election, the next morning when he came out there and said, oh, you know what? I actually won. Yeah. That would be like a playing a football game and the team <laughs> that won, it won the Super Bowl. Right. We all can see the score. Right. And the coach come out there, say that our team is a straight facts team and their team is the MAGA team. Right, and the right, MAGA right. team coach come out there and say, actually, you know what? We really did win. Is that how that works, you guys? No. <laughs> and Tom knows that. Tom knows that. And every single MAGA on this platform knows it. And what I understand is this. The reason why they come in our lives and they say all this foul stuff is you know why? Because why? Zeus, their panties are in a bunch because their president didn't win. <laughs> and so what they're trying to do Tell them facts. And what they're trying to do is they're trying to make us mad oh. because their president didn't win. So that's called something they're going to irritate us for the next four years. <laughs> Not going to work. Not gonna work. That's <laughs> right, Zeus. It ain't going to work. You know why? Why is that? I'm laughing and I'm giggling all the way to November 5th because I don't see the MAGA party growing. As a matter of fact, I see it shrinking and yeah. not just in real life on these TikTok streets as well. Zeus, yeah. I heard you say earlier that you got to get on out of here on time and I heard my bell, so I'm going to get on up out of here, but I'm going to say this before I leave. Okay, okay. It's all gas, <laughs> no brakes. And I don't care what y'all try to feed us in the mainstream media. We are not going for it. Nope. Black women are the base of the Democratic Party. We have been the base for years and will continue being the base. And there's absolutely, absolutely nothing that you can do about it, MAGA, because this is our country. Y'all have a good day, Zeus. All I right. All right, all right. Love, you, love you too, ladies and gentlemen. Let's give it up to Straight Max. No lies detected. And thank you for the gifts. Y'all know I'll be right here all day, every day. <laughs> you, you won't, you won't close and change and silence my voice. And I bet you, Straight facts. Let's go. You got that right, ladies and gentlemen. Let's give it up to Straight Facts. <laughs> We're going to keep the door to the floor over here, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, my goodness. Let's take a couple of more. Then Zeus does have to get up out of here. Uh, Nutty, good morning. How are you doing, my brother? How are you doing, Nutty? Good morning. How are you today? I'm all right. Just another day in the kingdom, you know, tending to the affairs. So um, I wanted to go back to Pittsburgh. Uh, he's someone that definitely, definitely needs to get into your closet of truth because there's a lot of things to unpack with him. Okay. Uh, he, he says he has a husband. But yet he votes Republican. Now, granted, I'm appreciative that he's not voting for Donald Trump, but he votes Republican. 
Pittsburgh, do you know how much of an oxymoron that is? You're voting against people who don't want you to exist. Mm. Every right that you have in this country today is because of a Democrat. Mm. Everyone that you have is because of a Democrat. But yet you want to call yourself a Republican? My friend, the devil is a lie. Lord have mercy. Oh my goodness. Rick. Another thing. Thank you. You. So over, What's that? over the weekend, I met a lady. I met a lady that said that she does not support the 19th Amendment. And I found that very interesting. And for those of you who aren't constitutional scholars out there, the 19th Amendment gave women the right to vote. Mm. And I looked at her, dumbfounded, and I said, you can't be serious. And she was like, no, she was dead serious. Mm. And I said, why? I mean, I couldn't think of anything else to say other than why. I yeah. never got an answer. I never got an answer. Was, was she was she MAGA? I mean, it sounds like she's MAGA. Was she openly MAGA, put it that way? She was not openly MAGA. Mm. But anyone who says that has to be MAGA. Yeah. Because we know that they have no brain cells up there. Yeah. Right. So obviously, it's no secret. I'm in the state of misery. I'm yeah. in the state of misery. Lord and, have mercy. Uh, yeah. And so obviously with this election, we're going to be, you know, voting for a new governor uh, because we do have term limits in this in this state. Mm -hmm. The unfortunate thing is that the Republican Party has been in a supermajority here in the state of misery for over 25 years. Lord. So the, the Republican candidates who are running for governor, I saw a billboard on I-70 that had the name of the candidate and underneath it said, securing our borders and i went huh hmm I that's went, what they hey. campaign on that's why they don't want to fix the border they said, securing our borders you're you're running for governor of the state of misery and how are you going to secure our are you talking about our borders with arkansas i'm down with the, i'm down with that <laughs> are you talking about our borders with kansas wow or Illinois, right? Like, what borders are you talking about? We, now we know what borders that they're talking about. We know yeah. what borders they're talking about. Yeah. But it's that type of rhetoric that's going to put him in the, in the governor's mansion. Yeah, it's that type of rhetoric that's going to put him in the governor's mansion because here we are in in a Midwest state, Midwest Southern state, and you're talking about a candidate talking about securing the borders. Are you create? Are you kidding me right now? That's what they talk like, though. You know, they're just rallying their base. You know, dog whistling, all of that stuff, and they act like folks like you and I, we can't see it for what it is, right? I so before I get out of here, straight facts. You you got it. All gas, no break. There like, you go. Seriously, we just have to we have to play whack a mole with these mega demons. You know that you know that game whack a mole. Yes, that's exactly what we have to play with these mega demons all the way up through November. Mm. We got to play whack a moles with these with these fools. So straight facts, thank you, ma'am. Because with your permission, I'm going to be using that every single time now. All gas, no brakes. I'm going to whack a mole the. Crap. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, ladies and gentlemen, let's give it up to Nutty Professor. <laughs> Alrighty then, alrighty then, alright. Good morning, Miss Boss Diva. How are you doing? All right, we'll try to get a few. Well, hello, start. Zeus. How are you today? I'm alright. How are you? Happy Monday. Happy Monday. Yeah, you know, um, I just want to say that your ugliness needs to keep that camera off because, yeah. you know, my bacon wants to stay down. Okay. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> it belongs yeah. in my stomach, not in the commode okay yes yes anyway but um you know it's funny it's funny now that everybody want to talk about project 2025 now all of a sudden it's the hot topic mm. well look at hot. here talk i've it. been talking about project 2025 since i don't know what now year year half now yeah and um you know at first it was just this big old you know thing that you couldn't really talk about on TikTok because you know you'll get bananaed you know what I mean 
talking about it now and and now that it's in the mainstream quote unquote mainstream media now is such a big thing you know what i mean yeah i mean you know shout out to taraji for you know putting it on the platform that she put it on which was great yes but you know now that it, you know it's it's causing this like weird type of fear zeus uh, you know what i mean it's kind of hard to explain how i envision this fear you know yeah it's beyond words right now because they want to be all spooked and talk about joe biden's age and all that but in the same breath you know oh project 2025 is dangerous and that's you know that's trump's playbook and blah 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 but yet you can still say that you might not vote for joe biden because of his age you might sit out the election because of his age makes no sense to me. i mean i'm trying to figure this out i really am yeah and then, um zeus the other thing is is uh adam schiff right mm -hmm. i got a bone to pick with adam schiff. really yeah because you know it seems to me that he was one of these bullhorns out here you know after the debate talking about you know biden to step down or whatever you know what mm. i mean and yeah. so i'm pissed off at him straight mm. up yeah because just to even utter those words from a prominent pop you know politician on the democrat side that that you know that pisses me off straight up yeah. you know yeah, I, mean, I mean a lot has came out about the democrats as a result of biden's the debate yeah yeah, a lot them has true came colors, out. Them Kodak colors, you know what I mean? And it came out <laughs> real, real vivid. Yeah. I mean, yeah. not a Polaroid, but, you know, Kodak, right? So here we go. Here yeah. we go with another, you know, issue to deal with. But um, stay encouraged, people. You know what I'm saying? Stay encouraged because yeah. Project 2025 is nothing at all unless we make it something. Bingo. Okay? We have to be able to make it. Tell you know, in order for it to be. And, um, I, you know, I heard my, my bill, Zeus. I, you know, I don't want to keep you and stuff. You got things to do. But those are the two, well, the three things that I wanted to bring up. Your All ugliness, right. you need to stay off the camera, man, because you are really, really um, causing some havoc out here with that ugly face of yours. <laughs> <laughs> that is so hilarious. I, listen, that's feedback, uh, Mr. Your Majesty, Tiny Tink Top Tim Tom, whatever Tiny you go by. Tom, Tim Tom, Tink Tom. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's feedback, bro. I mean, Tiny Tim top, Tink Top Tick Tock Tom. Yeah, yeah the, lady, the women here are actually saying you're, you're, it's getting a little offensive to see you, uh, you know, turn that camera on and get all up in the, you know, because they want to see things that, you know, are pleasant to the eyes. Right, so, you know, and I, I really don't. It's too early in the morning for that disgusting, ugly face, you know Yeah, what I'm yeah, and just because you wear Only a Only a face a mother could love, because yeah. I could never. I okay, could never, Sean, even Sean, as your okay, mama, Sean, I listen, still would. Their own. <laughs> to each their own. Beauty is in the eyes of the beholder. Looks like there's some people out here, Tom, that love it. All right, and I don't like Thank to get in the middle between people who are in love. If you love what you see, then I can't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 the heart wants what the heart wants i get it hey, but you know that's, what that's not something i can love though zeus that's something right. that would totally make me throw up every day but anyway love you zeus i appreciate right. you for having me up sweetheart. all right all right you take love care you have a good you day all right ladies and gentlemen let's give it up to the beautiful miss boss diva <laughs> you love zeus all right i'll do Okay, Tiffany, good morning. How are you? Hello. Oh my God, the beautiful Tiffany. Welcome. How are you? Uh, well, first of all, first of all, uh, tiny Timothy tank top, Tom, free the tank top. Okay, because. <laughs> and I'm wow. going to pull Zeus right now. Yeah. <laughs> Tell him. Listen, 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 first of all, you're travesty, okay? I haven't even showered yet today and I have my sleep mask on still and I still look way better than you do. Please oh. spare. Crushed. Okay. Crushed those little okay. blueberries, go for it. <laughs> um, and you, you had mentioned earlier too, about three minutes or less, Tom, you definitely understand that. Also ask your wife about three minutes or less. Oh, uh, so. <laughs> get up, get up, get up. Crushed again. So um, I did want to ask a serious question on Pittsburgh's oh, when he came up and, and what yes. he said about being a Republican. A lot to unpack, a lot to unpack yeah. with that, right? 
so I always wanted, I always, what well, I actually did always want to have a conversation with you and the kingdom about what are your feelings about to like the second amendment? What is your stance on it? I'm really asking. Uh, it needs to be regulated. Put it that way. Okay. So, you know, it's heavily and, and, regulated and, because I don't like this whole mental health issues thing that's going on. Right. And, and we're at a juncture in our, in our history where I believe like what was happening then and what's going on now is way different. So it definitely, there needs to be more regulation behind it. Yeah, absolutely. And I just always find the need to defend 2A, like with all that like intense loyalty to be very, very odd and strange. And I find it very odd that some people that really are aligned with 2A um, prioritize uh, pew pews over like women's rights. So I always find that to be yeah. a little bit yeah. They prioritize a lot of things over women's rights. And, and again, a majority of the violence that happens as a result of this is coming from men. Mm -hmm. Right? Absolutely. A bulk of it. And so the, uh, obviously there's a serious health issue, if you want to call it that. And because they don't want to address the health issue, they should address it from the point of how do you uh, restrict access. That's my opinion. Though. And, I, and I think I brought this up before, but a lot of people don't want to have the conversation of if you do actually own a PQ, it is much more likely that a crime will occur in your household than if you yeah. don't. Yeah. Because the, because the, the, the anyway, so I don't want to totally go off on 2A, but the, the uh, likelihood that a crime would occur randomly, like a, um, you being burglarized, is, is not very likely versus an unaliving right. uh, or, um, you know, a domestic issue. So anyway, yes, and somebody brought up uh, Bad Faith. I just watched it last night. It's I guess it's free on Tubi. Oh, um, really? Watch it on Amazon for a right, Kelly. Yeah. But so... Um, it really speaks to how since the 70s and 80s, Christian nationalism has been trying to take hold in our country. And it's a really chilling, like yeah. historical take of what's been going on. Wow. So I would encourage everybody to really watch that. Tell them, tell them. So we'll watch Bad Faith. Um, and what the, what was the, what was the short, sorry, short dig squad doing in Nashville? The, those, those heathens marching through the streets. Somebody had said earlier, where are the cops and why is there no presence for that? Well, we saw what happened on January 6th, right? And also because of racism. Mm -hmm. And because, and because, don't we really know that the police are in those goddamn costumes with the masks? Bingo, bingo, bingo. So let's, that, that's why there's also no police presence because they are heavily infiltrated in the, uh, what are they called? The, the, the Patriot Front? The Patriot Front, Proud Boys, Patriot. Boogaloo Boys, Oath Keepers, all these white yeah. nationalist yeah. groups, even the FBI. Absolutely. I mean, we know this, they know this. And then they get up here and they try to trick us. Well, why did the FBI, why did the police let them in? Because yeah. they're with them. They're with them. And I'd like to point out really quick, there were 40,000 pastors in the KKK decades mm. ago. 40,000 pastors and preachers. So where these are all, again, these are the police, these are the pastors, these are lawyers, all in these spaces. So, yeah. But anyway, Zeus, love all you. Right. See Zeus love with you the too. All and right, Biden. ladies. Gladden with Biden and Rodney. All right. Biden. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's give it up to the beautiful Tiffany for the people. All righty then. All right. All right. I'll bring up Bamba, and this will be my last guest, and then I got to get out of here. Good morning, Bamba. How are you hey. doing, my good friend? How are you doing? Good morning, handsome. Hey, how you are know, you doing? I'm doing good. Um, I, you know, people are scared, and you, you don't be scared. Look what France just did. Right, let's you know, out to France. What did, what did France just They do? united to stop the right. And that's, you know, so, the, but now, now, I, I, now you guys know what Ukraine's been fighting for, fighting yeah. against. See, they voted and it's still, they wiped them out. Yeah. They yeah. wiped out their vote. Good. And, Good. and so that's where they ended up. Yeah. This program, this program is being implemented already in Russia. The steps that Donald Trump has taken with the immunity thing, you know, trying to get that. Um, he didn't yeah. get it as much as he wanted it, but yeah. he, he got some. Then uh, questioning the vote is the number one thing in Russia. People don't vote in Russia because they know it doesn't count. Yeah. Wow. Right? That's and so alarming. Well, yeah. So, um, and in Ukraine, where they took over areas, yeah. they actually they actually counted the votes before the votes were even voted on. 
Wow. Right? And, and people showed up at their apartment door with pew pews yeah. to make yeah. them vote. Okay? Yeah. So um, that's so number one, you take down the vote. Number two, you get the immunity. Um, hmm. And now they're about to pass a word um, in, in Russia as a, a, illegal, and that's called childless. What? Anyone who who t- uh, t- claims to children that living without children is if acceptable, that's going to be illegal. So mm. that's that's up. I've known that for a while because I listened to a speech a long time ago of Putin's wow. that was really out of this world. Right. So, but we don't have to be afraid as long as we're aware. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, Ukraine... With we took forever, but now you understand why Ukraine is fighting. This is yeah. what they're fighting against. Bingo. We don't, and we have people here saying things like there'll be be violence and whatever. Well, then go look at pictures of what's going on in Ukraine and say that's what they want for our country. Yeah, you know they that's insanity. It. That that. Right? that they, you know, there's an old saying, you know, you, you got to be careful what you wish for. I really do believe a lot of people here really have no idea what they're asking for by making right. some of the most ridiculous they things don't. I've ever heard. And sometimes I think, okay, well, we haven't had that in almost, you know, a hundred and something years. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, maybe we need it. Maybe, maybe we're so ignorant that we need to go that route i mm-hmm. i would hope not but the other thing i want you to pay attention guys meg is going to be the first ones to pay see when a dictator or authoritarian um wants to put through fear in you the first people that they attack is their own yeah it's because they see if i can do this to my own what can i do to you bingo so meg has got to be really scary I put up an article today. There's a man named Tom Jones right now (laughs) investigating um, workers, um, federal workers. And he's also asking people to turn others in who they think don't support Trump. That is what's going on in Russia right now. Wow. There's an app on your phone where you can turn your neighbor or your brother, or anyone in who doesn't like the president or wow. doesn't like Putin, okay? That's where it goes. So if they're going to put a national database and grade you and sort you, for right now they're working on 100 federal jobs, and they're going to make it public. They're going to attack 100 people. Wow, publicly. wow, wow. I don't put stuff up to get a ton of... A ton of hits yeah but i put out i put up articles that help you go look you know wow. i'm not yeah. going to tell you but historically that's what this is and historically christians make rules and laws to police themselves and blame everybody else for their sins Isn't that something Wow, wow, this wow. Is, well, listen, Bam, but thank you. So, right. yeah. Don't be afraid. Be All strong. Right. Yeah. Okay. Hello. Thank you, right. Ziz, for letting me All up. Right. Have a welcome. great day. All right, you too. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give it up to the beautiful Bam. No lies detected. All right, ladies and gentlemen, listen up. That concludes this special broadcast. You all deserve a round of applause. <laughs> I got to get up out of here, all right? It's Monday. You know what we all got to do. We got to get to it. Um, but before I do, before I go, uh, we all need to give one more round of, uh, well, no, another round of applause for all the subscribers, gifters, moderators, and panelists. You all did an outstanding job helping to keep this show exciting, educational, and entertaining. <laughs> one last round, though, of booze and shame. These booze and shame goes out to the Zeus haters, all right? Not just my haters, your haters, too. These people get on TikTok and spread misinformation and disinformation on behalf of Vladimir Putin and the Kremlin. They promote evil, misogyny, xenophobia, bigotry, criminality, all kinds of corruption on behalf of Donald J. Trump and the cult. And then when you hold them to the, you know, you hold them accountable, 
they turn around and curse you out and delete their accounts. These folks are the worst of the worst. They are the scum of the earth. Let's give them our final round of booze and shame. <laughs> And on that note, ladies and gentlemen, take care and stay safe out there in those TikTok streets. Don't do nothing I wouldn't do, all right? True focus, the most handsome in the kingdom. And I really am the most handsome. Thank you, Stephen. I appreciate it. You all have a great Monday. Take care and stay safe. And I do mean that. This is how I move when I'm walking like Zeus. This is how I sound when I'm talking like yes, Zeus. Yes, thank you, Tiffany. This is how I stare when I'm looking like Zeus. I like to act a fool when I'm moving like Zeus. Let's go, cold as the day. Yes, thank you. Thunder in the sky, light you up like Zeus. Let's go. Have a great rest of your day. Let's go. Joke too cool. Miss Long, I see ya, I see ya. Let's go. I can't hang around with you you fall in love too quick. Have a great day. Let's go. 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 Let's